we've covered a lot of ground in the short period of time in terms of programming in Python. But you've learned how to create a Python file from the idle editor and to run it in that editor. We've looked at variables and the different data types being integer, float, string, and boolean. And we learned how to cast between those different data types using the keyword or the key method for each of those data types. You've seen how to put comments into your code using the hashtag. And we looked at various ways of using the print statement to print out not only simple messages, but also concatenated messages and how to format numerical data as we print it out. We've looked at doing math, basic math, in Python using various operators, including the little more distinct division operators of regular division, integer division, and modulus. And we've seen how to adjust the order of precedence in our calculations using parentheses and how Python solves calculations. And we looked at how we can import further mathematical operations by using the math library. As I said, we looked at concatenation where we're putting strings together. And then finally, we looked at the input statement, be able to get input from the user and maybe even cast that into another type of data variable. And the compound operators just as a shortened way of modifying a variable's value. So with all that, it's now your turn. And I have three projects for you in this class that use basic input, processing, and output. Very simple programs. One is we're going to do a triangle calculator, and then we'll do one where we take a, a jar of pennies and convert it to dollars, quarters, dimes, nickels, and, and remaining pennies. And then, of course, the temperature conversion is going from Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit. I'm going to jump over to Canvas. So I'm now in our Canvas course site. I've gone into the syllabus area. You can also get there to the assignments area. And here in the syllabus area, we see the assignments that are listed and their due dates. And uh, we, I presented the workflow demo earlier in another video where I have you walk through with me and submit that for grading. Uh, so this week, we, all, we have the triangle calculator, the pennies to dollars and change, and the temperature conversions, which is sort of a review that will be due next week. So I can click on this assignment for triangle calculator and see information about that project why we're doing it, how it aligns to the course, some information about the assignment itself, and I give you a little uh, screenshot of what that should look like. I also have for each of the assignments a PDF, and I like to work off the PDF, so I'm going to open up the PDF by clicking on it, and I can open it. Here then is the PDF, pretty much the same information you're going to see in the Canvas uh, site. You just format a little nicer in this PDF, and you can print it out very easily. Once again, here's the screenshot. So I'm going to have you put uh, basically the assignment, print that out, and your name. A little information about what the project does, and you can just duplicate what I have here. And then we're going to use the input statement to allow the user to enter a length of side A and side B. And then we're going to process and calculate the length of the hypotenuse using, of course, the Pythagorean theorem. And then calculate the area and the perimeter. This is worth one point. When you're all done, you're going to take that pi file, that .py file, and you're going to submit it into the Canvas area for assignment one. So one of the tools we can use in planning our program is an IPO chart. So we have three columns, one for input, and we're going to get from the user side A and side B. Once we've secured those, we're going to do, go through the process of finding the length of side C or the hypotenuse of our triangle. These are the two shorter sides of the triangle, A and B. So you remember the Pythagorean theorem is that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Therefore, the length of side C is the square root of side A squared plus side B squared. So we're going to add those together before we take the square root. What we need to be able to do is convert that formula into a Python statement. Then we want to find the area of our triangle, and that's going to be side A times side B times 1 half. And the perimeter is just the addition of the three sides, side A plus side B and plus side C. And then our output, we're going to show the hypotenuse, the area, and the perimeter. And here's the flow chart, getting the input, processing, output. Use float calculations and float numbers for all of these. So when you get the input from the user, side A and side B, they might put in a side of 12 and a half or 6.275. So use float you're going to enter this as a string. You're going to use the float method on your input statement 
to convert it to a float variable and then your calculations here will also be float and your output should be float and we're going to do these to two decimals so remember you can use that 0.2f uh, formatting string here then is my triangle calculator project running in the python idle editor i am asked to enter the length of side a so the the traditional uh, example is if side A is 3 and B is 4, then side C should be 5. So I'll do that first. I'm just going to put in some integers here of 3 and 4. And I'm told the length of the hypotenuse is 5.00. We're going to do this in two decimal places. The area is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. And take half of that is 6. And the perimeter is 12. 3 plus 4 plus 5. Let's run it again. And this time I'll do uh, 5.75. Length of side B might be 12.4. And the length of hypotenuse then is 13.67. The area is 35.65. And the perimeter is 31.82. So you can use the numbers that I used here to test your project and make sure you're getting the correct results. Next project I want to look at is the pennies to dollars and change. And the assignment here is six-year-old Stacy saves pennies in a jar. Every three months, Stacy takes the pennies to the bank and wants to know how many dollars, quarters, dimes, and nickels and leftover pennies should be given in exchange for the pennies in the jar. Write a Python program that solicits input as an integer of the total number of pennies and then calculates the maximum dollars, quarters, dimes, nickels, and remaining pennies that should be provided in exchange. So if we have 562 pennies, Stacy should get $5. And then on the remaining 62 pennies, we get two quarters. And on the remaining 12 pennies, we get a dime, no nickels, and two pennies left over. You should never have more than three quarters, never have more than two dimes, and never have more than one nickel, and never more than four pennies. And again, I show you the output of what that should look like. Let's take a look at the IPO and flowchart. So the input is going to be the total number of pennies in Stacy's jar. Out of that, we want to calculate the number of dollars, which we can divide the total pennies integer division of 100, and then find out how many pennies are left over. And I would use the modulus operator for that, though you could subtract uh, the dollars times 100 from TP. It'd be another way you could do it. And then we need to find how many quarters we can get out of that, rema out of that remaining number of pennies. So here TP in division 25. And then we can take TP and we can subtract from it quarters times 25. So simply another way of doing this TP modulus. You could use the modulus operator here as well. Then do the same things for the dimes and nickels and total pennies. Our output is going to be the dollars, the quarters, again there should be 0 to 3, dimes 0 to 2, nickels 0 to 1, and total pennies should never be more than 4. If we had 5 pennies left over it should have been a nickel. If you had three dimes, that should have been a quarter and a nickel. So we're going to get the maximum amount of dollars, the maximum amount of quarters, and the remaining maximum dimes, maximum nickels, maximum total pennies. And here's my sample program running in the idle editor. Again, I'm going to show the, the name of my file or program, who had developed it, a little bit about it. So this program will calculate the maximum number of dollars and remaining quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies that would be exchanged for a specified number of pennies. So the number of pennies. Let's say uh, Stacy has 1,267 pennies in the jar. I'm going to press the Enter key, and I'm told that would be $12, 2 quarters, 1 dime, 1 nickel, and 2 pennies. I'm going to run it again, and this time we'll do 731. Uh, Stacy would get $7, 1 quarter, no dimes, a nickel, and a penny. So again, you can use my numbers here to see, make sure that your project is working fine. When you're done with it, submit the pie file to in the canvas where I can grade it. The final project we'll look at in this video is the temperature conversions. Here you're going to do two programs, one to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit, another to, to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So two different files you're going to zip those together and upload them. Again, I have screenshots of each of the files. Um, you can do 100 for Celsius. You should get 212 for Fahrenheit. That's the boiling uh, temperature of water. And if you go vice versa, 
212 Fahrenheit, you should get 100 degrees Celsius. Of course, we can do 0 and 32 or 32 and 0. Those are good points to measure since those are, are common points we talk about in converting between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Again, there's a PDF here. I'll open the PDF. Pretty much the same information. And again, you're going to, submit, you're going to zip both of those together. Please only use the zip uh, compression routine. Okay, so here's one file. This is going to uh, convert a Fahrenheit to a Celsius temperature. And again, if I put in 212, I should get 100 degrees Celsius. I'm going to run this again. And if I put in 32 degrees Fahrenheit, I should get 0 degrees Celsius. I'm going to run the other program. So here I'm converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And if I put in 0 degrees Celsius, I should get 32.0 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, we're, we're going to calculate these to one decimal place. I'm going to run again. I can enter a decimal floating point number. And so 99.5 is 211.1. It's not 212. So again, use these values in testing your program. Take the two files, zip them together and upload them into Canvas. And if you don't know how to zip files together, let me demonstrate that to you. You want to find your two files. So I have my temp C to F and temp F to C. I'm going to select both of those. And then I'm going to right click and choose Send To. And of course, I'm working on a Windows machine, slightly different on a Mac or a Linux box. But I'm going to send these to a compressed zipped folder. And here I get a zip file. And I get an extension of .zip. If you don't know how to show those extensions, you can go to the View menu and make sure you've got a check mark in File Name Extensions. So this is the file then that I would upload into Canvas, and it contains those two files. And then in Canvas, I can un I can download it, unzip them, and run the two files.